grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. You know, in reality, here, as we look at the words and the life of Jesus, we see a 12-year-old boy, and we also see him interacting with the Ten Commandments. We see our Lord Jesus interacting with the Ten Commandments. And a lot of times, and mostly when we talk about the Ten Commandments, who are we talking about interacting with it? Us. Ourselves. But I think it is worthy of our time to see how Jesus, a 12-year-old Jesus, interacts with them. Because I think a lot of you, if you think about it a little bit too much, and you go, hmm, I think you might have broke a commandment here. Right? I tell the confirmation age kids, the parents will fire me if they don't learn the fourth commandment through and through and through. It's an important commandment, which we'll get there in a minute. But that is the case here. So did he break the commandment? Did he break the fourth commandment in particular? Well, I'll read the fourth commandment to you real quick here. I'll make sure I, I get it precisely right, as it were. Honor your father and your mother. Well, that sounds like a commandment that, again, our confirmation age parents truly love this commandment. But let's look at it not from the parents' point of view, but let's look at it from Jesus' point of view, just to try it that way. Maybe there you'll see where we're going to go with this a little bit. Now, I don't know about you, but I have had the experience of getting in trouble for something I didn't know about. I'll explain. This is a safe one for me because uh, my dad's not here today, so it's good. <laughs> All right. And the rest of my family finds this story hilarious. I kind of forget about it and remember about it, but neither here nor there. So, uh, you remember back in the day when VCRs were new? I mean, new, new, and not cheap? Well, we had one of those VCRs, and it lasted a long time, maybe two or three houses, move even. And so I had taken the VCR from the upstairs TV down to the downstairs television so friends and I could watch a movie. And the VCR was there, and we pushed play, and it was all fine. Then I went away to do something for the day. I don't, I don't know what I was doing. And I came home, and my mother and my sister said, thank God you weren't home. Your dad was mad at you. What did, what did I do? He dropped that VCR and broke it. And I said, how is it my fault that he dropped the VCR? He's convinced that he got popcorn butter all over it and it slipped right out of his hands. Now, obviously, I, I, I get it, that he could maybe uh, uh, feel that way. But obviously that's not the case. My point of all that is I got in trouble for something that I did not really do. Jesus is now, in your mind, in trouble for sitting in the temple talking and learning for something that he did not break a commandment for. His mom and dad did not come to him and say, come on, let's go, or we're leaving at noon. You need to be on the, the train with the people. He's just in the temple worshiping, learning, and being him, and they forgot to tell him. It gets even worse. They walk around for days in Jerusalem. Why did it take them so long to end up in the church, the temple? Out of all the places and of all the young men who have ever existed, let's be very clear about the situation. If there was ever a young 12-year-old boy who would end up in the church enjoying it, it would be this young lad. In fact, they have kind of overlooked the reality of their son. He did not break a commandment. He did not go against them. He was not submissive to them. He just didn't fulfill a requirement or an ask that was never asked of him. Hmm. How do we deal with the fourth commandment? How did you deal with the fourth commandment? By the way, that commandment comes and goes in your life. When you're a little child, that's an important commandment for the child, right? But there's a point where your parents get to a certain age and it becomes an important commandment all over again. Don't they? It's a very important part of the Ten Commandments. 
That's, uh, can I put the check mark here? Jesus fulfilled it. It even says in the text, he was submissive to his parents. He did not go against their will. He just was not aware that he's supposed to be on the road. Or how about the third commandment here? That's an important one. That's the parents think the fourth commandment's important. Pastor Schmidt really likes the third commandment. Again, I'll read it to you. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Go to church. Go to church. Do you think they had to twist Jesus' arm to go to church? Did they have to twist your arm to go to church when you were a child? Is it, was it the best part of your week every week, Sunday morning in the sanctuary as a child? Did you say that? It wasn't for me, by the way. It was the baseball diamond or something of that nature. I'll be honest. But not for him. This is the place he desired. Remember, he's in Jerusalem. All alone, can do whatever he wants. He's 12 years old. He's completely free to do what he wants. And where does he show up? Church. You know, I've been a pastor for about 20 years now. Very rarely do I have a young child just show up and go, Pastor, it's Tuesday afternoon. Uh, I'd like to sit down with you and just listen to you and watch you prepare your sermon for next week. And we can discuss the uh, proper distinction of law and gospel within our text today. I don't see too many adults doing it, to be honest with you. You know, there's a phrase I've been using a lot, and people are getting it now. I hear others saying it, which is, you don't have to come to church. You get to come to church. You just didn't have to be in the sanctuary. You didn't have to fulfill the third commandment. He wanted to. He loved it. It was his best day. It was his relaxing day. It is the day of his refreshment, in fact. Because it was built for that purpose in Christ fulfilled it. So we'll go back to, again, I'm going to put a check mark. Jesus is fulfilling this commandment. How about us? Good days? Bad days? Days where you pulled yourself into church because you have to? And days where you went to church excited? Well, it's the human condition, I understand it. But again, we're looking at Jesus, a man who has perfection as part of the title we gave him. So we got to make sure he fulfills what we did. Last commandment I think is discussed here, a little 12-year-old Jesus is dealing with, you shall have no other gods. The first commandment. He's in his father's house. That's where he belongs. In fact, the temple and all the glories of Solomon of all the gold, of all the silver, of all the everything, of all the worship going on, of all the learned men standing there, that temple was never more glorious until that 12-year-old boy walked in. Then it was glorious. Then God shined forth. Then there was something special about that rock and steel and gold or whatever it is. Not before and definitely not after. It's when God's presence is there, that is a glorious place to be, is it not? I was uh, being uh, shown around a big mega church once. When you're a pastor, you get asked to go look at things. And, and it was not a Lutheran church in any way. Not even close to a Lutheran church, to be honest with you. But it was big. It was beautiful. And it had chandeliers. Crystal. Why don't we have crystal chandeliers here? And they had Turkish rugs. We don't have that. And they had an organ. Oh, Diane, the pipes on this organ went on forever. I mean, literally forever. Sanctuary was big and bold. And the television, they had cameras that you would see like in a television network. And they actually paid and had on network television Sunday morning locally. It was massive in size. And as you walked through it, they told you all the things they did. And they did a lot. And then obviously, as I, I'm a pastor, they always say, we have a conversation, you know. And then they go, well, what would you think of our church? And I'm not a very good player with other people. I, I get my own sandbox. I'm not good with others in it. And I said to him, well, not very impressive at all, to be truthful with you. 
Now I know what I was doing, by the way. I know I was poking the bear just a bit. He looked at me and goes, why? And I go, you should come to my congregation. Oh, it's a cinder, this is back from my last church, cinder block walls have been painted. Oh, and the carpet is wearing out. And we worship 45 to 50 a Sunday in this little parish, one of my two parishes. That's all there is to it. Uh, we have, we have uh, enough money to keep the building going and a pastor there and nothing more. But that place is impressive compared to yours. And he looks at me and I go, I'm not joking with you. I'm not pulling your leg. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm truly saying this. And finally he goes, why? And I said to him, every Sunday we come up to the altar and receive the body and blood of Christ. You can never do that. They're non-sacramental. That, this, is far more impressive. For Christ is in us. He's in our hearts. He's in our body of believers. And he's at the altar giving his body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. You see, where Christ is present, where he is present, it is a glorious day, a good day, a happy day, a day worthy of stopping and saying, the Lord Jesus is in our midst right now. When we say Jesus is perfect, it's not because we wanted him to be perfect. It's because he did live in perfection. He is the spotless lamb who was given as a sacrifice for our sins. Even 12-year-old Jesus was living perfect. And even at the end of our text, we see those words, the fourth commandment, fully embraced by Christ. And he was submissive to his parents. I tell you what though, wherever Jesus is, that is a glorious place to be. Thanks be to God that we are with Christ today, this morning, and we will receive his body and blood as well. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus.